five days into the Turkish military operation in northern Syria, the U.S. military is pulling about a thousand soldiers out of the combat zone. We find ourselves as we have American forces likely caught between two opposing advancing armies, and it's a very untenable situation. The Kurds have been very good partners in the de-ISIS campaign. Uh, they were very good fighters on the battlefield. We obviously enabled that as well. But at the same time, we didn't sign up to fight the Turks on their behalf. The U.S. administration would rather keep the focus on Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, whom they accuse of planning to attack Syrian Kurds no matter what. On Twitter, President Donald Trump said Ankara will be held accountable. Dealing with Lindsey Graham and many members of Congress, including Democrats, about imposing powerful sanctions on Turkey. Treasury is ready to go. Additional legislation may be sought. There is great consensus on this. Turkey has asked that it not be done. Stay tuned. But Trump's withdrawal order has critics accusing him of abandoning the Kurds. Even those Democrats now drafting a sanctions bill against Turkey. For God's sakes, what are they waiting for, right? People are being killed right now. Our Syrian Kurdish allies are being killed right now. It looks like many of the ISIS detainees, there are about 10,000 fighters, are now possibly going to be able to escape. There are reports this morning that ISIS sympathizers have already escaped, thousands of them. And here you have Secretary Mnuchin saying, oh, well, we'll think about it. Maybe we'll do something. President Trump tweeting that he's going to destroy their economy. They, they look ridiculous right now. And those Republicans who normally support Trump's foreign policy. To see this yet again, you know, leaving an ally behind, abandoning people that uh, we frankly told that we were going to be with uh, is disheartening and depressing. Frankly, it's weak, and I don't see how it follows through on the president's promise, his biggest promise of the campaign, to defeat ISIS, because I think it is going to research. Conflicting priorities in a war zone with no clear idea where the U.S. troop withdrawal will lead. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, Washington. Zainal Khoda is with us now from Akchakale near Turkey's border with Syria. So anything more, Zaina, on this news from Syrian state television about Syrian forces moving up? Well, the withdrawal of U.S. forces from this strategic corner of Syria really puts the whole area up for grabs. There is more than one player in the Syrian conflict who wants to control this, this territory, which has oil, which is the breadbasket of Syria. The Syrian army saying that they're sending reinforcements to northern Syria to confront Turkish troops. At the same time, the Syrian opposition, which is allied um, with the Turkish government, they're sending troops to the front lines in Mimbi. Minbij has long been a flashpoint town, also in a very strategic lo location in northern Syria. So really, the, the area is now up for grabs. New front lines emerging, then there's a new map. Uh, who is going to get what? The, but as, as the past few hours, uh, the SDF, this is the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, they are the biggest losers, really. They've lost ground to the Turkish army and its allies. They've lost control of practically 120 kilometers uh, along a stretch of territory along the border. The Turkish army has moved 30 kilometers into Syria from this northeastern point. Uh, they've taken control of a crucial supply line. So it's a really chaotic situation on the ground. Um, what happens next, whether militarily or whether deals are brokered, will really determine the fate of 30 percent of Syria's territory. And Zaina, what about the fate of all the people in the area? President Erdogan has been clear to say that Turkey will take the greatest of care uh, when it comes to civilians. Uh, but there are also a lot of civilians who are on the move at the moment. Yes, 130,000 people displaced by the fighting. This is according to uh, the United Nations. Uh, this corner of Syria is populated by Arabs and Kurds. They have a long history of animosity, which uh, their wounds were deepened as a result of the Syria Syrian war. Uh, there's little trust between them. The Kurds say they have long been discriminated against by the Arabs. The Arabs say that the Kurds took advantage of the war to take, to take their lands. So there is a fault line here. There's ethnic tensions. Uh, 
um, it's not just the clashes that people are worried about. It's what comes next, which, which uh, ruling authority, let's say, takes control of what area. How could Kurds live under Arab authority or Kurds do not trust the Turkish government? So it's a very messy situation on the ground. You can imagine the fear in, in, in people because these people have really seen years of war. They've seen the war against ISIL and now the latest operation. So there's a lot of fear on the ground. Thank you, uh, Zeyna Hoda in Akçakale, near the border.